much love and peace to go around. So much love for the whole world on a beautiful day. You're watching Hello Nigeria. You're watching Hello Nigeria. Don't touch the dial. Hello Nigeria. Watching Hello Nigeria, you're watching Hello Nigeria. Don't touch the dial, Hello Nigeria. Sit back and relax. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now I am not alone. I am joined by. Uh, voice on 99.3 Nigeria in for morning crossfire where Mimo Adewuni and it's always a delight to have her bring some of her spice to us here on Hello Nigeria. You know she dishes it as it is hot. She doesn't sugarcoat anything. <laughs> Nothing you know, at all. But no, it's, time. It's, no time. <laughs> no time to sugarcoat. Time, no time, no and sugarcoating is not really good yeah, because right. of Jedi. Yes. It's diabetes. not good for your health. <laughs> you know, too much sugar. It's not good for you. Too much so. sugar. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much. Did you have a good day? Uh, yeah, well, so I have a media hub, you know, Midrive. So we've had trainings for two days, yesterday and today, on story crafting and impact journalism. So you've so been spending been, all your day working. So I'm done or... with my show. I'm out of the studio immediately, training all day. So but it's been worth the while. But at the end of the day, that is exactly what, you know, what counts for what we do. Yeah, absolutely. If you are the only success, you're not able to pass on the knowledge that you have to others, it's then you haven't really, really achieved True. So, to soccer. so well done and thank, thank you for the you. amazing work that you thank do. You, you know, I, I really wish you we were here yesterday as well. We talked yeah. Happy Workers' Day. Shame. It's a day that we, would, we celebrated those, I, in, in my exact words. I said Workers' Day is a day to celebrate workers around the world, most, particularly those who have jobs, legitimate jobs. Emphasis. On legitimate jobs. In capital now, letters. <laughs> we find that there are many, everybody, many people have jobs. You know, people, people have what they're doing. Yeah, shashe. There's something they call shashe. What's that? To shashe, I, I think to, it's to, cut. To, to do work, but it basically surrounds internet fraud and ah, all of that thing. That's to do, take some shortcuts. As exactly. So <laughs> rather than doing the work, something that is legal, you're yeah. doing something that's illegal, something that people cannot, you can't trace the source of your spending. Like they'll say, something the you don't want to hand over to your children. Uh -huh. You're not really proud. So you can't say the outside and say, this is what I do for a living. So, I mean, well, there's this, um, this war that has erupted on social media for and against internet fraud stars. Some people come out outright, of course, we know that Simi was very vocal yeah. about her displeasure or the disgust mm -hmm. that internet fraud um, makes her feel. And talking about how it is wrong, and even went as far as saying that if you know you're an internet fraud star, you don't, buying her music, don't buy my buying. music, right. you know, don't buy my music. And people mm -hmm. came at her, telling her at the end of the day, these people are the ones that make you eat and all that. Now, beyond Simi, several other celebrities have left their voice. Particularly, I'd like to focus on Alibaba. Alibaba has been coming hard on them. Even today, I think it made about two or three posts on the same issue. Exactly. So. But on the other hand, some people are coming out to say, oh, internet fraud is not wrong. Um, talk to our politicians. They are the ones that are, that are the, the brain behind all this. They're the ones that made economy hard. Naira Mali had come out to say yeah. that um, internet fraud is an offshoot of slave slave trade, yeah. which I don't quite seem that to it's a, it's a, understand. We are getting back at the white people for enslaving us, so we also take some of their money. Okay. Really wrong thinking. <laughs> we will come back to talk about all these people and their several notions about internet fraud, but our conversation today is based on a post put out on Monday by Sheung Kuti, where he says, or he described Yahoo Boys as the legitimate child of Nigeria's political and business elite. In a post he shared it on his Instagram page on uh, May the 2nd, the singer wrote that the Yahoo boy is the legitimate child of the political and the business elite. Our ability as Nigerians to pick and choose what criminals to hate and what criminals to jump and dance for is the reason we can't develop, especially when the criminals we shock and jive for are the real devils. Stigmatize, stigmatize all Nigerian criminals, not just the Yahoo boy. So hmm. in... What, what do you make of the statement? Would you say that is it a statement that is leaning in favor of them in a way? So is it, it, it tries to be diplomatic with that last line by saying criminalize all, all Nigerian not criminals. Not just. Okay, so it started by saying that um, uh, Yahoo boys are offshoots or <coughs> offsprings 
of politicians. Is it, it not similar right. to what Naira Mali is saying? In no, a no, 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 not similar. So he could be right because there's a lot of thieving going on in our politics. There is a lot of thieving going on. Security votes, we don't know how much it is. It is. Right now, some governors will start telling us that they can't pay. Just some weeks ago, the uh, governor's forum came to tell us that there would be recession from 2019, 2020 to 2021. And of course, uh, and, uh, LCCI and other chambers of commerce have come out to say, where did you get your projections from? So they're projecting that we're going to have a uh, recession, but they are spending a lot of money. So he might be right by saying that, like I said the last time I had this topic, it's mentoring going on. Young people can see this thieving going on in broad daylight. They can see the society celebrating these thieves by buying Ashwebi when they're coming back to their constituencies instead of sending them back. So you have a politician who has stolen all your money, who has written out a budget and asked for money to build so and so constituency projects. We, should, we shouldn't even be their, their business in the first place. A legislator should be making laws. Now they allocate money for themselves to fix roads and build schools and make boreholes. Oh, which yes. will be and the some job of, of the have, local government. Yeah, some of them even have like faces that are fronting this project. So yes. they're putting someone there. So it's like, oh, this person's handling the project, but indirectly. It so is you this have these people come back to their constituents, constituencies, and the people there have not asked them, Oga, this is the budget. So we have um, agencies like Budget that break down the budgets for everyone to understand. And you can see how much allocation has been given to your constituency, how much your lawmaker asked for for your constituency, and there's nothing on ground. And they are coming back home, and we are buying Ashebi and coming out to receive them. We have people who have stolen our funds, gone to court. There is still a senator currently in jail who is also assenting to a bill in the Senate. But you know the so funny young thing, people are saying this. I things. totally understand what you're saying, and it's something that we've been advocating mm. against, you know, the fact that we can't have these corrupt people in positions of power and expect things to be better for Nigeria. No, you know, we, we need to see a drastic change. Yeah. They can't be saying, oh, lazy Nigerian youth and the likes, whereas we're not seeing the, the hardworking Nigerian mm -hmm. adults doing things, by, uh, going, going by the books. But will we, will we excuse bad behavior but with another bad behavior? Never, so we're saying, ju never justifiable. Exactly. Two never wrongs will make a right. So when you, when you, we, I think uh, Shane was just being controversial you know, but he tried to balance it out a bit. But you can't justify a wrongdoing by another wrongdoing. You know, I've told you, the best way to end all of this is to build a museum and put mm -hmm. all these thieving politicians that have been uh, taken to court and the court has found them guilty. Put them in a prison that looks like a museum and let young people, young students, primary school, secondary school, come see them. Oh, this was president between so and so year and so and so year. He stole so and so amount, and that is why he's here for so and so years. Well, that's a very interesting idea. Yes, Remo, but you, work. you, you mentioned something. You said politicians have been taken to court and that the court has declared guilty. How many of them? Right. You know, we we How do have some, but it's nothing compared mm. to the number of. Um, thieving, yes. let me steal your word, thieving politicians that actually exist. If we're going to be firm about thieving on whatever grounds, yeah, we, yeah, we are politicians, we have to be firm. It's going to be, we have to do it. One of the three legs of this administration is to fight corruption. If we're going to fight that corruption, it has to be across board. Let there be a fairness. People can see that you are truly fighting corruption and then the yeah, yeah, guys can learn the big lessons because they see the big men being thrown into jail, being punished for thieving. So they would learn a lesson, but it doesn't justify, nothing justifies bad behavior. I mean, if you have a ban, bad mentor, you stop learning from that person. Like I said the last time I was here too, there are good people who are setting good examples. Why are you not learning from them? And Why are we, you not we see that, to be like them? We see that, you know, it's, people think it's just internet fraud. You're just, you're duping one white man or a white woman somewhere of money because you think, well, they have too much money. Let's even bring it home. When you go to bed one day, you wake up and the money you've been saving in your account is all gone. It's all gone. Then it will hit home. You know, there's there's, a, there's an African proverb that says, when it happens to someone else, you feel like it happened to a tree. Mm. In my head, I'm saying it in evil. Like when you say it to someone else, when it happens to someone else, it happens to a tree. But you never experience it truly until it hits close to home. So you go to bed one day, you wake up, and everything in your account is cleared. Even or maybe not Yahoo guys, I said it when we had this conversation. Even you, who is a Yahoo guy, when you steal this money and it's in your account, you feel like you own some money. If you sleep and wake up and the money is all gone, you feel horrible, although you stole it. But you now feel like it's yours. Imagine someone who had to work for a whole year 
I had to follow a case of a, an elderly woman, a retired woman who, was, who had a petty business, who had saved up to 300000 That money was wiped off her account. We That's had so journalists sad. following that up, and the bank couldn't trace it. A friend who, was also, who is also in the U.S. sent me a message, put it up on Instagram. I had to tell him what to do, and said his father-in-law, someone sent him a message to say, oh, send some money to us. We want to clear goods. They took this man of about 200000 naira. And the banks are not helping. How come we're not tracing these people? How come we have data? I mean, NCC tells us to register our SIM card. If someone sw I mean, swindles me, uses a bank account, and that bank account has a BVN, why is nobody arrested? Okay. How, why can't, why, how, how come we can't find them? All right, so we're going to take a few phone calls. We'll open the phone lines and hear what your thoughts are as regards this issue, with regards to the internet fraud, popularly known as Yahoo Yahoo. You know, what's your take on it? And if you are among the team that genuinely thinks that we should get rid of it, how can we get rid of it? The numbers to call are on your TV screen. Calling and let us know what you think. Well, more, let's look at another angle. Now, this is the angle of talk, uh, those who play modern-day Robin Hood. So they're stealing Peter, robbing Peter to pay Paul. And they talk about cleaning the bill. So it's, you get this money through illegal means, fraudulently dupe someone of their money, mm -hmm. and then you decide, oh, you want to do kind acts, acts you of kindness. To, you want to build so a you now to build, you build ex and exactly a build schools, you go to hospitals and pay hospital bills. Wow. Well, that's yes, because I read that on social media today. That you know what? A lot of these Yahoo boys I'll are pay your time. Yeah, this how exactly. These Yahoo boys are making they are making life better for other people. They are kind. They are doing this. Does the act of kindness, does it reduce the, the horrible nature of the, the stealing that was done? No, it doesn't. So you have made someone cry. You have ruined someone's life savings. Some people will fall into depression and they will never recover from it because you stole from them. You can't justify that by then giving to the poor. Good intention, bad Motivate. I mean, it's all bad. There is not a good intention anywhere. I mean, giving some persons about 10% of that money doesn't make what you've done right. I don't know how you sleep at night. I mean, thinking about what is going on with the person you've just robbed. Because that person's mind is swelling and you're having a party. No, nothing makes that right. Now, again, we say there's poverty. Uh, we don't have enough jobs. So these young persons are idle, they don't know what to do. And, you know, a lot of the arguments as well is that the government of our day has failed us. We have, we do not have enough job opportunities. So the average ah. young person, because we have a very creative mind, the average Nigerian is extraordinarily creative. I mean, it takes intelligence, high level of intelligence. Do you know how to much able to work? To, to do internet fraud and get away with it. Yes. You know, to be able to swindle someone else See, takes a lot of creativity. if you are listening and you're a Yahoo person, I know you might be listening, you are extremely smart. And I'll just say to you, go learn how to write softwares. Channel this intelligence into positive things that could help the country. There are applications that you can make. There are health apps that, that could help reach people in the grassroots to bring health care to them. There are amazing things you can do with your mind. There are grants available online that you can apply for with these things that you can do. So well, it's not like they don't know they can do these things. Wouldn't you rather see it as a problem of our moral compass being tilted and the fact that people have lost the essence of values. So people want to make quick money. People are taught, they're no longer taught the, um, the meaning of gratif uh, delayed gratification. Mm. Everybody has an I entitlement mentality. I exactly, I want it and I want it now. We're a microwave generation. Everything you want, you want quickly. You want food, you're ordering online. You know, very soon they are going to de develop an app that you can just use to download food from your phone. Sincerely, you know? I've so, taught myself the uh, innovation is never complete. Oh, until you can download download food. Food we'll come back to continue having this con conversation. We have love call calling from Lagos. Hello, good evening, and thank you for calling. Hello? Yeah, good evening. Good evening, thank you for calling. Good evening, thank you for calling. Yeah, thank you. My name is Philip Bass. I'm calling from Lagos. All right, please go ahead. All please go ahead. Yeah, they should just stop celebrating those Yao guys, and they should implement some law that uh, if they were caught, maybe they should just execute them once and for us. So it should stop as a lesson to all that. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you for that contribution. Maybe not. Wouldn't you say that's rather <laughs> Maybe not. Extreme? I don't support death penalty at all for any reason whatsoever. I don't. Now, look at the Saudi Arabia lady, um, Zainab Aliyu. Now, the thing with death penalty is the person might have been innocent. And once they're dead, you can't appeal death. You can't take the person to the Supreme Court and say, bring him back to life. 
If he's dead, he's dead. So we don't maybe, give people a second chance to actually exonerate no, themselves. No. We even had a case in Port Harcourt recently where a man had been um, wrongfully sentenced and had been in prison for over 50 years. And now he's suing the state government for 20 billion naira. Fantastic. You know, he'd, been, he'd been here for 27 years. Yes, he, at the time he was out, he was over 50. So he, he spent the to. larger part of his life in prison. I like now, that. Now, he was on death row. Imagine that he had actually been killed. You won't find out 27, 27 years, years later, later that he was, was innocent. innocent. So yeah, maybe um, death sentence would be a little too no, extreme. No. Although some people would argue that a, an internet fraudster is a low-key murderer. Because sometimes you rip, rip this person of everything that they own, everything they've worked for. Imagine all your life savings, your pensions, your, your 70s, mm -hmm. you know, and then this is time for you to start ripping the fruits of your labor and somebody just come wipes everything. And the person thinks, what is there to this life again? I, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then go somewhere, take something that terminates their life, mm -hmm. and that's the end. So at the end of the day, not only have you duped this person, not only have you committed fraud, you're also a murderer because you've killed someone. Every crime is intense. I mean, you can describe every crime <coughs> at whatever level as intense. They have multiple uh, rippling effects on the persons affected. But we can't then kill everybody because at the risk of killing everyone who has done something wrong, you run the risk of also killing an innocent person. So rather, you know, look for other ways of punishing them, yes. maybe some jail sentence or, you know, something, but not death, no. All right, let's um, take our last call for this segment. We have Lucky calling from Lagos. Hello, Lucky. Good evening, and thank you for calling. I'm just watching. Thank you very much for calling, Lucky. Um, I believe you want to contribute to the conversation at hand. Yes, uh, the, the best way to stop this yaw yaw boy is through the bank. Okay. Because so this money is being transferred through the bank. Yeah. And if the government is serious to stop this yaw yaw boy, they can do it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Lucky, for that. Very you true. had mentioned That's, that yes. earlier. I mean, the money is wired through a bank account. Um, every bank account in Nigeria today has a BVN. So no bank can tell me that they can't trace that money. Something is wrong somewhere. You should be able to trace that money down to wherever it was transferred to and let people be made to pay for this. You know, some sentences, let's see if we can then, uh, you know, get their senses back working properly and bring them back into the society reformed. Remember that the essence of prison is not just to punish, it's to reform that individual and bring them back to society as a better person. So again, you look at a prison system, it's all whacked. People go there, they come back worse. Even innocent persons get into prison and they become hardened criminals from the prisons. Yeah, so the essence is to and reform them and bring them back to society. So. If someone does wrong, you don't then say, oh, uh, I mean, you can go to blazes for all we can. No, they are still humans. They have human rights, and they have a right to life. So sure. we don't kill them. All right, that's all we can take for now um, with regards to this. But all that we'll say, final thoughts, Wemi Mo, with regards to um, how we can deal with, perceive and deal with internet fraud. So it's from the home. Let's start from the home. Uh, we can't belittle the impact of family. So if you're at home, what lessons are your children learning from you? So a woman made a joke and said, I've always told my children they must have their bath before 9 a.m. every morning. And that this morning she did not have a bath at 12. And the son came to say, Mom, are you okay? Is everything fine? I'm just asking because it's actually 12. I mean, so it's different that you're telling them something. What are you doing? They can't see. Uh, no, tell the person I'm not home. And you're right there. You're teaching them to lie and to look for dubious ways. So from the home, we can have impact on children. I mean, shift, you can carefully nudge them to be responsible, even when they're young, to own up to their responsibilities and to begin to work, you know, to begin to learn. If I tell you this, you laugh. My son, I made him work when he was four. Not serious work. So he always said, Mommy, what's work? What is work? What do you go to do? I said, oh, you want to know? He likes books. So I tell him, let's go to a bookshop. Here's grammar. So when people come in, you collect money, you give them the book, and then you pay. That's work. Let them understand the essence of work. That's beautiful. Of earning money. Yes. And I gave him a wallet. I was paying him per day, just 15 naira in a oh, wallet. something. I always yes. say that when I, when I have my own child, if they ever ask me for everything, I'll make sure that it works for every yes. money. They will Let earn them every understand money I give to them. 
how money is earned. You know, that's way they know what people go through to get money. You don't want to swindle people because you've gone through it yourself. You know how it feels. Now, we understand that the economy is very tough and that people are trying to make ends meet. We're not going to overlook the fact that yeah. things are actually difficult and people are just trying to survive. So what I would say is we can try to be kinder to one another. You know, if you see somebody that has life a lot more difficult than you and you have it easier, if you can, by all means, within your power, please help. Try and make life a little less difficult for the next person. That's the end of the... At the end of the day, that's really why we are here, to make Humanity. life easier for us. Yeah. But I, also, we need to be to, to have a strong voice against internet fraud. You can't sit on the fence and say, ah, everybody should do what they like, you know, until the day they finally come around to you and you lose everything that you've worked for your whole life. So we must have a strong voice and a strong stand against internet fraud. That's all we have for now.